Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the Lord. Here we are again with Writer Ministries Bible School, and we're glad that you're here. Praise the Lord. I'm here glad you're in Bible school. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good place to be. We're excited that we have these Bible schools, and we know that there is a lot of revelation knowledge given to you, and so I just pray that you receive all that God has for you. We're going to be teaching on our fifth session, Dreams, the Language of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to be talking about animals as symbols. So we want to open up with prayer and let the Holy Spirit be our teacher. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this awesome time. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. We thank you for the revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that comes upon us to receive the Word of God. And we give you praise and glory in all the people of God said. Yes, amen. yes and amen and amen. Praise God. Dreams, the language of the Holy Spirit. And we're on session five, animals as symbols. The Bible uses many animals as symbols. So let's go to Isaiah 53. In verse 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. So here we see Isaiah describes the Messiah as a lamb led to slaughter. Also, let's take a peek in Revelation. And, of course, there's a lot of things in Revelation, but we're just going to go to chapter 17. And we will start in verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. Amen. Yeah. In case you're interested, that's one of the Verses that they sing in the Hallelujah Chorus. Lamb of Lamb, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So we see in that, in that verse that the Lamb that became the conqueror. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now let's go over to the New Testament in the book of John. And we want to go to chapter 10 and in verse 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So Jesus speaks as his followers as sheep. All right. And then Revelation again in chapter 12. As we can start seeing, there's plenty of places in the Bible, I'm just picking out a few, where animals are used to describe things. In chapter 12, let's go with verse 9. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we see there is the fierceness of the dragon. And then in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, 
Then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the serpent that tricked Eve. We can see another animal's symbol here. In Daniel chapter 7, you find Ezekiel, you head over to Daniel a little bit, and there you be. In chapter 7, in verse 2, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night. Can you say that? It could be a dream, huh? And behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings whereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised itself up on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So you can see there are strange beasts as described here. And now let's go to Zechariah. The little guy Zechariah. And we want to go chapter 6. And in verse 2. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses. And in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, gristled and bay horses. And then verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So Zechariah the prophet described horses. So I just wanted to give you some insights that there are animals as symbols used in the scripture. And you'll see these in your dreams, not always, but they are there. Okay, Like the animals of Daniel's dreams and visions, which represented the nations that were fighting and contending with one another. So the animals in our dreams often picture our emotions or instinctual traits and instinctual traits. It is well to study the habits of animals to understand what they symbolize in dreams. So the biggest thing is they are identifying emotions more than the other, I think. That's my personal opinion, of course. And a lot of people don't realize that as they see things in their, in their dreams. Okay, some animals, such as the fox, the cock, the lion, and the eagle, have common symbolic meanings. The fox, with its cunning, the cock, with its early morning call, the lion, with its royalty, the eagle as king of the sky. They may have different meanings for each individual and must be checked with each person. Each symbol may mean something different to each person. So it depends on how you were brought up, depends on your younger years and the things that you might identify with that are part of your setting that the Lord is going to use. Amen? So if you've ever visited a farm and you stayed out there for a few days or a week or a month or whatever, you can remember some animals. And as you grow up, you have dreams because they're familiar to you because they were in your setting of your life. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 10, one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> Matthew 10. And let's say... Jesus is speaking, and let's find out what was Jesus really saying 
in this verse. Matthew 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So what is Jesus really saying? He was saying that they were to be shrewd in carrying their message, for they would be among many dangers. That's a nice way to interpret what he's saying. But he's using animals to give you some insights. Amen? Amen. So we know serpents are smart. They don't always go in and do things like you think they should. And doves don't do anything that's bad. Because you all know that doves, when they mate, they stay mated till they die. They never leave. And that's why Song of Songs says you have the eyes of doves. Amen. So, giving you a little extra here. So, doves are harmless. They're more like to be like what Jesus is. Amen. But the objective here is, what is he saying? He's given a word picture. He send you forth in sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. All right, let's move over to John chapter 3. So while we're looking up the, the verse, I just want to remind you that next session, and we'll be going to chapter 6, but next one after that, 7, i got more to tell you, but on the 8th one, I would like for each and every person to have their dreams recorded, write down what we've given you in the past, your interpretation, your setting, and the response to the dream. So we can go over the dream, and if you don't have all the answers, that's fine. I just want to know that you're dreaming and writing them down. So that will be our eighth session. So if you don't have anything written down, we won't have a very long meeting. But if you have something written down and you're talking about it, we could have a long meeting. So I really want everybody to participate. I give you the handouts to write down your dreams and get as much as you can. If you don't get all the answers, that's fine. Just come and share. And uh, maybe the rest of us can come up and then do the interpretation. Say, bless the Lord in Jesus' name. So each and every person here, we're really looking for you to do that. So if you're having a difficult time between now and then, just say, Lord, Pastor Robert, give me an assignment, so I need you to help me. Amen. And God always helps. Say, thank you, Jesus. Okay, John chapter 3. And let's go in verse 14. Jesus speaking, he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus is using the snake as a symbol of himself. Because we know that Moses put together a snake on a, on a pole. And we'll get there in a minute. But why did he use this? Because he used the symbol to show us that he took the sin away for our healing. Amen. Now, I know the camera can't see this, but we have a cross on the wall. And I I just want to share this with you because we're bringing up healing. I like to talk about healing. Everybody looks at the front of the cross. And you know the Catholics got Jesus on there, okay? But what's on the back of the cross? Everybody look at me and say, healing. Healing. What's on the back is Jesus. What did he take on his back? Stripes for our what? Healing. So what's on the back of the cross? Healing. What's on the front? Salvation. Say, thank you, Lord. I just thought I'd throw that out for those who are listening. Amen. Got a little extra there for free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Numbers chapter 21. Let's go over the numbers. Thank you, Lord, for the book. And we go over to chapter 21. We'll start in verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole, put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a certain had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now talk about faith. (laughs) Come on, talk about faith. You have to just Look at it and believe you're healed. How hard is that? I mean, ambulances drive by all the time with the serpent on the stick. And how many just look at that symbol and you are immediately healed? Interesting, isn't it? Oh, they go, oh, okay, that's just an ambulance. With no faith involved, so therefore they're not being healed. 
Imagine yourself. Start thinking about it. All I have to do is look at something to make me well. Right. And that's the beginning of faith, to believe what God says, even though you don't see it, you can have it. <clears throat> see it spiritually, though. Amen. Start throw that up. All right. Animals, birds, fish, all kinds of animals. So just as God showed Moses to put the snake on a staff for healing, so Jesus is our healing for today. Praise the Lord. Now, animals, birds, and fish, and insects in our dreams often speak of our emotions or natural instincts. A lot of people don't realize that, but how does a fish represent your emotion? How does a cricket simulate your emotions? And you have to go, hmm, what's that symbol mean to me? And why is that? Why is he saying that? Because there, there's a lot in the animal and the insects that teach us a lot. For example, I never used to like cats very well, but I do now. And Miriam, my wife, taught me how to look at the face of our cat to tell me what that cat wanted and was thinking. Was it afraid? Was it happy? Did it not want to go outside? Did it want to stay in the house? And you know, now that she showed me what that facial looks, so I go, okay, I can identify what that cat's really saying to me. And I make her meow, she wants to go out. And so I make her vocal, bless the Lord. But the fact of it is, once you learn the symbols and what they are meaning to you, oh, I get it, and that's when it happens, amen. You got the idea, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to move on to another part of the language of the Holy Spirit. And it's really short, and we'll be almost done with session five. The importance of children's dreams. Children dream. Children's dreams are important because they often reveal the fears and the joys of their hearts. When children have nightmares, and this is something a lot of people don't do. I've watched it, you know, we all watch the TV, we've all seen the movies, we all heard about a kid having a nightmare. Of course, the movie always tries to make it worse than what it is. But the parents don't know how to respond to a child who says, I'm having a nightmare. They're not quite sure what it is. And the objective here is when a child has a nightmare, it's a good idea to pray and seek the cause of the dream. Why is the child having this tile? See, the kid isn't going to tell you. How many know that? Because he doesn't understand what just happened. And a lot of them have a hard time speaking or they can't put words together yet. We're talking little kids all the way up to, you know, teenagers. And if you'll pray and seek the Lord and find out from Him, why are they having a dream? What is the root cause of this dream? Now, I'm just going to throw this in because the Holy Spirit's put it in my heart. Most people don't know how to hear from God. Hey, Lord, what, why is this happening? I, got no, I, I, go, I don't get any answers. A lot of people tell me that all the time. Well, I was just reading in the book of... Where, where am I? Uh, First Kings, where Elijah takes a hike and he's over there and, and gets a revelation that God's not in the wind, he's not in the fire, he's not in the earthquake, but he's the still small voice. So what small voice is speaking to me on the inside? And so I reviewed my teaching on four sources of wisdom. What is talking to you? Is it your mind? Is it your emotions? Is it the devil? Is it God? And if it's your mind, will, and emotions, so those things are speaking to you, how do you shut it off? If it's the devil, how do you shut it off? If you've got your uh, sensual part of you speaking to you, how do you turn it off so you can hear God? So those of you that don't know how to do that, you need to get our videotape. You need to get our DVD on how to do that. It's teaching on spiritual warfare. We do four sources of wisdom. It's highly recommended that you get it. The simple thing of this is the fact that you know that you're dead in Christ in Romans chapter 6. And when you come to the knowledge that you are dead in Christ, you don't do the things that, that the devil's telling you, your mind's not getting squirrely on you, your flesh isn't acting out because you commanded down the lust of your eyes, lust of flesh, pride of life, 1 John 2, 16. And then identifying that God always speaks to you through the same word I use in James 3, 17, which is God is always going to speak to you peaceably. He's always going to speak to you in such a way there's no hypocrisy. It's always going to be peaceful. It's going to be easy to be heard. You like what he's saying to you. That's how God talks to you. So God talks to you through the scripture. 
God talks to you through the, what he's already created natural. He talks to you through prophets. He talks to you through your pastor. And he talks to you personally. All you got to do is ask and God will speak. Speaking is not necessarily hearing with your ears. It's hearing you in your spirit. Your spirit identifies that God is speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is the one giving you the revelation. And when you pray in tongues, you get the interpretation to know exactly what God's saying. So those of you that haven't yet got baptized in the Holy Spirit, be sure to get that. Because it's an important part of your life to hear the voice of the Lord. So if you're going to pray and seek the Lord on what is the meaning of the dream, you've got to have some understanding how you hear from God first. In Jesus' name. A lot of the times the Holy Spirit will direct people who don't hear very well to read in certain scriptures and to get the understanding through the Bible. And as you listen to the Word. Now, for a lot of you men watching, it's important that you understand word pictures. Understanding when I, I say something to you, I'm describing something to you. Let me give you an example. King David had a situation in his life where he, he killed a man to get his wife. Well, nine months later, it comes up. His wife's pregnant. And the prophet Nathan comes and says to David, I know this guy who, who, who has a lamb, and he's just like a pet to his children, and it's awesome. But he lived on a land where the guy was rich, and the rich man didn't want to use any of his flock, so he took this man's pet and killed it and fed it to his friend that came to visit him. Now, why is he using this lamb and talking like this? Because David used to be sheep herder amen he would take the sheep coat and he would go out there and he would minister and he'd understand little sheep and how they would come up and eat out of his hand and and he would pet them and they're just like a friend to him and and he'd understand like i'm talking to you about how a cat looks at you he probably understood what the sheep was doing and he realized that they were like people and he understands they're not always smart and so here's the situation. Now this man's giving him something that identifies with his past, and he understands about sheep, so he's using something that describes an emotional part of David. So a word picture is, bro is meant to get you involved in what's being said, so you identify with it, and therefore you make a, make a, a rational decision by what you've heard. But the Holy Spirit uses the word picture to say, oh, this is what you're doing. Oh, I'm doing that. Now you've got a hold of my heartstrings. And you can turn that person. So good word pictures help people who are controlling. And you can share how to get them out of that situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. So uh, an example was this. I, I'm going to use me. Not me ever having a problem, but we all go through ups and downs. I was over at the local video store wanting to get some videos for my wife and I to watch one week, evening. And while I'm there, this man comes in with his youngster. And the youngster's like, well, how about this, Daddy? Can we watch that? And the, kid, and the man says, no, no, we already watched that one, son. Find something else. And he's looking all over. And the little boy, how about this one? Oh, no, you don't want that. That's well, not good. You don't want to watch that one. Mm -mm. Put that one back. Pretty soon the little boy comes over. How about this one? Oh, you already seen that one too. That's okay. Pretty soon the kid's not asking anymore. So I went home and told my wife, now listen to the story. And I told her, to, and she says, did you know that you do the same thing? <gasps> and I go, oh, I did, didn't I? Yeah, because it's always what I want to watch, not what you want to watch. And so I learned by that. And I go, oh, wow, thank you, Jesus. And you learn to make those adjustments. So hearing the voice of the Lord in that, with the wisdom that God gave my wife to tell me to make an adjustment. So all of that goes back to this nightmare situation with the youngster, okay? So it's a good idea to pray and seek the cause of the dream. Why is the child having this dream? The children who are having these frightening dreams generally have something going on in their lives that needs to stop. When you remove the cause, the nightmares will stop. And sometimes this can be just peer pressure. It can be something schoolwork. They're not doing very, very well. They, they got scolded. There's all kinds of things besides nasty stuff. And nasty stuff happens. But we're just going to believe God that that isn't the only reason why they're having nightmares. Amen? Amen. Now, on the other side of that, it can be a delightful thing to listen to children's dreams and enjoy the feeling and the pleasures that they find in them. And so you can encourage them to dream more. It's also important to be able to discern what is going on in their inner lives in spite of all the outward appearances. 
Now let me tell you the word discern means to scrutinize, investigate, and what's the other one? Scrutinize, investigate, and I forgot. But bless the Lord. So when you, you're, you're, I have the spirit of discernment. No, you have suspicion. All right. Discerning means you investigate, scrutinize, and you look the, and examine. examine. Thank you. Examine it. So you pick up one apple, you pick up the other, you're scrutinizing which one is the better one. You're examining it. You're, you're looking it over. So the word discern means to look into this thing, all the aspects. Now my doctor, bless his soul, he's not, he went the way with the Lord, but he used to tell me, he says, you know, the reason why we don't make a conclusion, because when you conclude, you stop looking. So I go, hmm. So if you're going to discern and you scrutinize, examine, and look through the thing, you're not going to just stop and say, well, I've concluded this is what it is. And when you do, you narrow your, yourself down to that's all it is. Well, it could be a hundred other things because you didn't check in on it. So discernment here is to look for every angle, every, don't stop. Just because it sounds good, it looks good, it looks like it will be the answer, don't stop. Keep looking. Because you know there's a lot of things that will mask to look like something else when it's really not. So it's important to be able to discern what's going on in their inner lives in spite of their outward appearances. We must be careful not to burden the children with the same rules as we adults have in our dreams, okay? But remain with them on a level of their understanding. And it's really neat because the kids have imaginations and they just go all over the place. But God's speaking to them and you can ask them what they think it means. And I can guarantee you most of the kids already know the answer. They just don't want to say it. And that's one of the parts of bringing it up. Their imagination is great. And so are their symbols. Though real, they may be exaggerated. None of us ever have that problem. We never exaggerate. We call it evangelization. We just broke out a little extra on the side. And that's not what you're supposed to do. Anyway, nonetheless, we can be helpful to them in both their joys and their troubles. Amen. Amen. So God is working here in this teaching, and I'm sure you'll grasp onto it. But pay attention to symbols. Now, there are a lot of books, there's a lot of stuff on the internet, there's a whole tons of symbols out there, and don't go out there and get yourself a list. Well, look at this list, I have this list, I have that list. It is not the list, it's what's in your heart, where you've grown up, what you've done, and so when you see certain things and you look at it and you ponder in your dream, just, just bring it back to the Lord. Say, okay, Lord, you showed me this. I forgot exactly what that meant. Oh, yeah, I get it now. And then as you meditate on the things of God and share with Him and loving on Him, He always brings it out so you'll grasp it nice and easy and gentle. He doesn't slam dunk you into it. He gives you a chance to let the light get brighter and brighter and brighter on the inside of you. And pretty soon you'll get it. So I had an awesome dream last night. I know exactly what my dream is all about. There was no worries, wondering what that meant or how was that because of the Holy Spirit. I woke up several times in the night, and this was close to waking up early this morning. Would it be okay if I shared that with you right now? Praise the Lord, because otherwise we're going to quit and go on to chapter 6. <laughs> I was dreaming of preaching and teaching people how to function in faith. And I'm not going to give you all the details because I'll give away my preaching what I'm going to do on Friday. <laughs> but the fact of it was the Holy Spirit had showed me scriptures that I'm, a, that I'm used to, my setting. And he gave me a, a ton of, you know, I'm sitting back watching me preach. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm hearing the Spirit of the Lord giving me this information. I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it just all made so much sense to me that everybody that listened and it was interesting. In the dream, there were a bunch of people like ready to receive. And then there were others over there talking and gabbing and not paying attention. And I'm, and I'm thinking, now, how do I get these people in the position to receive, to heal? Because God always tells me to give them the word first, then minister healing because the word is going to draw their hearts to, to get alive. And so the scriptures just started flowing out of me and it just made so much sense. 
And I'll give you chapter 8 of Matthew. And you can read that about the woman with the issue of blood. And, and that the Lord just opened up my mind and showed me all of the things in that scripture to bring forth other scriptures that would bring people to a place to receive, which made their faith to grow so they could receive their healing. Mm -hmm. And that was an awesome dream. And I didn't get startled. I woke up and I go, oh, man, can I have session two on that? You know, it's like, yeah. And I told Mira, I got to get down to the office and write down what I've got. And I didn't write it down yet because it's in my heart. I could probably go over and just preach it right now. I was just like, yeah. So I told the Sarah, when you get to that healing explosion this Friday, you're going to videotape that whole message. <laughs> I told her we're just going to do highlights. But <laughs> so this is going to be an awesome message. So the dream is going to teach you in my next session of difference between objective and subjective. How many are ready to go there? Let's end in, on this one and let's come to us an ending on session five. I like this one. This is great because once you start realizing more and more what animals do and how they function. And it's really cool because our daughter's living with us and she's got three cats plus our cat and they all have different personalities, you know, and a dog, praise the Lord. And so you get, this, you get to know that animal after a while. You know what's going on in their hearts and why they do it. And you can tell when they're naughty too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for joy. We thank you, Lord, for the animals and our dreams that you give us revelation knowledge on these areas of our life. And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to communicate with youngsters in their dreams. And we give you praise and glory for this awesome revelation. And all the people of God said, yes, amen. amen and amen.